Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase. My name is David East and my favorite CSS color is Cadet Blue. And I'm Sumit Chandel. And wait a minute, you said last episode was Papaya Whip. Well, I, I changed my mind. Well, today we're doing things just a bit differently. Normally, we answer questions that you ask. But today, we're covering some of our favorite Firebase productivity tips. So if you like this episode, Make sure to like and subscribe on the video because we can always find more productivity tips to talk about. Let's get started. Our first productivity tip. So David, what are your favorite tools for prototyping Firebase web apps? There are two amazing tools for quickly prototyping Firebase web apps. And the first one I'm going to cover is Glitch. So if you head over to glitch.com, you can create a new project. And in this case, I'm just going to create a basic Hello World web page. And Glitch is just an editor. So I have an index.html, this script, and these styles. And I can go and create a firebase.json, and that hooks me up to Firebase hosting. And so I'll create a hosting config where I just say the public folder is one called dist. From here, I can select my project. So I'll select Web Quick Start. And then now I can set things up for hosting. But what I want to do is I want to go into my package.json and add packages. So I can add Firebase, Webpack, because we're going to do some bundling, Webpack CLI, and then a copy plugin just to move files from source to dist. So now I'm going to rename these. So from source index.html to source index.js, and the same with the source.style.css. And now I can go and create my Webpack config to set up my bundling. And this just uses copy Webpack config to move my static assets over. So now I'm going to use the Firebase SDK. So I'm going to import Firebase from Firebase slash app, initialize my Firebase app with a config. And then afterwards, I can just go forth and do all my Firebase stuff here. And you can see right here in this secret.env, that's my project ID is stored there. And then now I want to change my file instead of saying uh, script.js to main.js, because that's what Webpack is going to rename it to. So now I'm going to go into Tools. And what I can do is go into this full page console. And this is just like a local console in your machine. I can call Webpack from my node modules bin folder. And Webpack runs just like it would on your regular machine. We can see it creates that disk folder with all of my files in it. So now if I go back to my Firebase.json, I can click Deploy to Firebase. The console pops open at the bottom. And we see we deployed to hosting, and it was successful. I click View Firebase App, and here is my web app. The next tool is StackBlitz. StackBlitz is tailored for JavaScript framework style apps like Angular and React. So here in StackBlitz, I have all these templates of Angular apps, React apps, but I'm just going to choose a basic TypeScript app. And then from here, you can see that I have a Firebase project hooked up. And with one button, I can deploy. But first, I'm going to add the Firebase package. And so it's going to install Firebase. And then now I can just say import star as Firebase from Firebase slash app. And then what's awesome is, is if I create a Firebase app, we can get all that code complete. So Firebase.initialize app shows all of the Firebase methods. So I'm going to make a change just to see that things are moving. And then I'm going to click Deploy. And just like that, the site deploys, and it's out on Firebase hosting. So if you're going to build a web app and you want to get started fast, both of those tools are a great way to move quickly. This next productivity tip is for you, Submit. Why is Firebase hosting not updating a deployed file? So this is actually a really common question that developers ask. It's even one of, the, one of David's top voted answers on Stack Overflow. It's true. Here's what's happening. You've made a change to your website and deployed it to Firebase Hosting. You go to the site, and you see the change. But then you make another change, and all of a sudden, nothing changes. What's happening here? Well, to understand why this is happening, we need to talk about the cache control header. The cache control header tells a browser how long to locally cache a file. It does other things too, but we're not focused on that for now. This is done with the max age directive, which is set to a certain amount of seconds. 
By default, Firebase Hosting sets a max age directive of 3,600 seconds or an hour. This means the browser will cache the file for this time period and not attempt to update it until it expires. For the most part, this isn't a problem. Most websites are not updated a few times within an hour. But when you're developing and testing, this can be frustrating. You deployed a new version, and you don't see any changes because it's within the cache time period. But fortunately, you have a few options here. I'll be covering what you can do in Chrome, but it's very similar for other browsers. You can either do a hard refresh with Command-Shift-R, or you can open up Chrome's DevTools, click on the Network tab, and check a little box named Disable Cache. Keep in mind, the cache is only disabled when the tools are open. So the next time you're wondering why the file isn't updating after a successful deploy, make sure to check the cache. This next productivity tip actually comes from a developer, Chris. Chris asks, is there a way to copy documents across projects in Cloud Firestore? For example, from dev to prod environments? Uh, you bet, Chris. The Firebase Admin SDK makes it easy to script the copying of documents from one Firestore DB to another. So here, I'm going to make a project where I require the Firebase admin SDK. And then I also am going to require two service accounts, which you can generate in the Firebase console, a dev and a prod service account. I'm going to initialize one app with the credential of the uh, dev service account and the database URL. This will return a dev app. And then I can do the same, but return it as the prod app. And so now I'll create an async function called promote data. And then from here, I'm going to take the dev app, grab the Firestore instance, and go to the collection of to-dos, or really whatever you need. I'm going to await the snapshots from that collection. I'm going to grab the documents and loop through them. And then for each one of these documents, I can just go to the prod app and then take uh, create a document with the ID and then set it with its data. And then now I'll just call promote data and run that script, and the documents will copy from one environment to the other. Keep in mind that this specific process is not atomic. You can achieve an atomic update with batches, but that is a tip for another time. So that is all the productivity tips we have for you today. Got some productivity tips for us? Or are you curious about more specific products that you want to learn more about? Let us know. So, Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And also subscribe, because we are going to be doing lots of tips and tricks. And we will see you in the next episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase.